I think most people in neuroscience, and by the way, I'm one of them until recently, have thought of consciousness and the process of self as emerging mainly out of the cerebral cortex, this large expanse of our brain, which is, of course, as everybody knows, the crowning achievement of evolution, and there's no doubt about it. I think that this is incorrect. I think that while the cerebral cortex is extremely important to generate consciousness, in particular the self, the structure that is key, and without which you cannot have self-processes at all, is actually in the brainstem. And this is very fascinating because it sends you to a set of structures that is very old in evolution, a set of structures that in essence have existed since reptilian times. So if you go to a lizard or a frog, you have a brainstem that has the same basic design of our own. You have to scale it up to our size, but in essence, the design is the same. So here we are, depending for our consciousness, and specifically for the processes of self, on a structure that is as old as the brain of a reptile. And maybe it can even go further back. So this, of course, is, is likely to cause quite a lot of uh, perplexity in people who I used to think as consciousness as the purely human or mostly human process that is related to the most human thing in our brain, most distinctively human thing in our brain, which is the cerebral cortex. And I think that that is wrong. So what, of course, that means is that you have to consider the possibility that animals have consciousness and self-processes, uh, which I believe strongly is the case, but it puts the brainstem in the middle of the picture and maybe even at the center of the picture. Now, I don't want anybody to get the idea that I'm saying that consciousness comes out fully formed out of the brainstem and that the cerebral cortex is useless or secondary. No, this is a process that is very complex and that requires many partners. But one point to be made very clear is that there is no consciousness possible once you damage the parts of the brain stem that have to do with consciousness, namely a part that is known as the brain stem tegmentum, which is in the back of the upper brain stem. And this is a part of the brain uh, that when damaged produces coma uh, and persistent vegetative state and other such syndromes that are not so nice to behold. Now, the cerebral cortex is then picking up on what is being made by the brainstem and producing this spectacular show, which is human consciousness. But it results from the interaction of cerebral cortex and brainstem. And by the way, you can even have considerable damage to the cerebral cortex without demolishing consciousness. There are huge chunks of the cerebral cortex that can be entirely removed without consciousness being at all impaired. And there are parts of the cerebral cortex for which that's not the case. But it, it's very important to realize that if you damage brainstem, you lose consciousness. If you damage certain parts of the cerebral cortex, you do not. And the cerebral cortex provides you with all the great coordination of images that go into our mind, but does not is when you, it's probably best not to take sides and not become too much enamored with the brainstem versus the cerebral cortex. But the very least we, can, we have to say is that it requires all of these structures working together and that without the brainstem, forget it, you're not going to be conscious.